Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of React WooCommerce theme. In the previous episode, we learned about how to add the footer on our front-end React application. And in this video, we're going to learn about how to fetch the products from WooCommerce, all right? So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to basically use the WooCommerce REST API. So if you go WooCommerce REST API, that's the documentation. And we are going to go to the authentication part first. So first we need to authenticate. So first we will go ahead and generate the API key from the WordPress admin interface. So we'll go over here, WooCommerce settings, click on advanced and then click on REST API and then create an API key. Okay, so let's give it a description. So we are under the REST API over here, WooCommerce React, okay. And permission should be read or write and then click on generate API. So there's our API, okay. Now the next thing we do is we go back to our React application and then we go to ENV and under ENV, we will create two constants. The first constant name would be WC consumer key. Okay. And the second constant is going to be WC consumer secret, right? Notice that I'm not prefixing next public because I don't want these key and secret to be available onto the client side. That's why I'm not prefixing it with the next underscore public. I'm just saying WC consumer key. You can name it whatever you want. All right. And then we are going to copy this, paste it over here and copy the consumer secret as well and paste it over here. And just make sure to put that in the ENV example as well so that if anyone else is using your project, in my case, you guys will be. So at least people know that what it's gonna be like. So, like so, all right, perfect. Okay, so then the next thing I'm gonna do is so authentication is done. So I've set up the keys that are required here. The next thing we need is basically a package. We need to install a package and this package is called WooCommerce REST API. It's an NPM package. So let's see what this does. So this is basically a JavaScript library for WooCommerce REST API and it supports common JS and embedded system module, which is ESM. Okay, so let's go ahead and install it. So I'm gonna say npm install WooCommerce REST API. So let's go over here. So we'll go over here and hit it, npm install WooCommerce REST API. And while it does that, we'll follow what needs to be done here. So it's saying that if you're using ECMAScript module, if you're doing it client side, then you can use the import. But if not, since we're gonna be using the server side, we're going to follow this one, okay? so. In Next.js, you can create API endpoints like so. So you can see there's already an example we have available. And if you go to Next.js API introduction, basically gives you all of the information about where that uh, route will be available. So you can create routes. One of the other things I love about Next.js is that it is so easy to create your endpoints in Next.js. You don't have to worry about creating server.js and you know express and set up all of that nothing you can just create a file and automatically uh, your endpoint will be available at that particular route and uh, let me quickly start the development server npm run dev in order for us to access this hello endpoint all we have to do is just say localhost 3000 slash api slash hello and that's it and there you go. You can see that it's sending us the response, which is name John Doe. And if you go back and check, that is what is being outputted. So status code is 200, res.json, John Doe. And you can also see over here, it says build page API slash hello, right? So we don't need hello, but it would, what we definitely need is to get all of the products. So I'm gonna delete this basically. And then I'm going to create a file called get products okay and then inside of this the first thing i'll do is i'm going to follow this which is this one 
So you basically create a constant. You require the package that you've just installed, which is WooCommerce WooCommerce REST API dot default. And then we instantiate this object WooCommerce REST API. So this becomes our object and this API will have different methods available like API dot get API dot post. Uh, so we, sh we would be able to make a request. So you can see that we have get endpoint available. We have post endpoint available. So you can see you can say api.get, api.post, and you can make the request, all right? So that's that. Uh, next thing we'll do is we'll put our WordPress site URL over here because we're fetching the data from WordPress. So we'll say process.env.next. Okay, let me just copy it quickly. So next public WordPress site. Consumer key, again, this is our consumer key. So I'm gonna say, process.env.consumer key. Similarly, consumer secret as well. Let's do that. Consumer secret. There you go. Perfect. And the version number is WooCommerce V slash V3. Uh, if you're watching the video at later in future, then whatever the version number is, you can use that. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we'll say export default async function handler and then request response so this will receive the request and will return the response as well uh, the first thing we'll do is we will create an object and we'll call it as response data and we put that as either success or failure then we are going to make a request using this api api.get and so we'll use the try catch method so i'll say try and this is an async await so i'll say const data await api.get. So if you take a look at the REST API for products, list all the products. So the endpoint is products. Let's do that. Products, comma, and then it's gonna need how many pages you want, so per page. So if you see, you have different options available here, like you can pass context, page, search, after, before, exclude, include, order by. So you've got so many options available here. If you're wondering how you're gonna do the pagination and load more, we'll come back to that at a later stage. The reason for this is because I really want to focus on the basic things like displaying all the products, add to cart, cart pay, checkout, payment integration. And once we are done with all of that, we'll come back and develop the pagination and load more and all the other things okay uh, let's get the bare bones ready first so we're gonna go per page maximum number of page to be returned per page and this is going to say let's say 50 i'm going to make that dynamic in a moment but let's just leave this like so for now and then once we get the response i want to set the value so if it's successful then i'm going to say success equals true and then if it's, then I'm gonna say response data dot products equals data. And then if it fails, so catch, so catch any errors, error. And over here, we're gonna say response data dot error equals error dot message. So we're gonna set the error, we're gonna set the error property here, like so. And then we also say, res dot status 500 dot json and then response data perfect so now now that we have this endpoint ready which is get products if you're wondering why did we not do it client side the main reason is because you know you have this sensitive information like uh, the consumer key and consumer secret. And since this endpoint is server side in our Next.js application, it is safer compared to using it client side where hackers may get the access. So that's why I'm keeping my endpoint here rather than you know using it on the client side, although you can do that. Perfect. So, and just before we hit it, we also need to return the response. We'll say res.json and that will be response data. So we set the value of success to true products data and then we just go ahead and use that. And now we're just going to run our development server, npm run dev, there we go. 
started, compiled, and instead of saying API slash hello, this time we're gonna say get products because remember that our endpoint is get products. So whatever the file name is, that becomes your endpoint. And then it's available at root URL slash API slash get products. I'm gonna say, here we go. Congratulations, there we go. So success true. And we've got all of the products, WordPress pennant, logo collection. And if you go back and check, you'll notice that these are the products that we have. And we are actually fetching 50 products maximum. So this is our products available. And you've got all of the data, your name, slug, permalink. And notice that we have front end URL here and not back end, which is pretty powerful. And, and if you remember from the previous video, the way we did that was uh, by going to settings and general and setting that front end URL here. And that's how we were able to get our front end URL because we'd expect the user to go to the single page on the front end and not on the back end, right? So if you take a look, uh, currently I have 18 products available and in future videos we will create the load more and pagination etc as well okay but for now let's just get the bare bones ready now there's just one more thing we need to do so currently we have hard coded this value of 50 items but we would like this thing to be dynamic so you would like that this endpoint can accept the query params which is per page so if I pass 20 in the query params and I should be able to fetch only 20 products. So let's do that. So for that, what we're gonna do is we'll put uh, request.query and then we'll pull per page out of it in case if it exists. This is optional chaining. This is just to ensure that if the query um, object does not have per page, then we're not gonna get any errors, okay? And then we're gonna just check if per page is available, great. If it isn't, then just take a fallback as 50, all right? Now, if you go back, if we now add query params, which is per page, and then we put one, you'll notice that we only got one item, right? We put two, now we got two items, great. And if I remove this completely, no worries, it's gonna do its own job, which is fetch the default number of products, which is 50 maximum. In our case, it's just 18, so that's what it's doing. I think it's, it's better we do it this way. Yep, all right then. All right, so in the uh, next video, we're gonna continue further with displaying these products. And I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Do start my repository to support my work and do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayyad and my Twitter handle is Cody Tech. All right, so I'm gonna see you in the next video. Thank you very much, bye-bye.